Now, we've all heard that Kerfland is coming, but what will that mean for your local grocery store? These small business owners say if the government lets it happen, they might be forced to shut up shop. It is all about having a fair go. Grocers, bakers, even ice cream makers. Well, I think we all have to stand strong because uh, it's going to affect us all one way or another. These hard-working small business owners have a message for the latest foreign mega chain to set up shop down under. It's un-Australian and it's not fair. No free kicks to Cowfland. Cowfland is the world's fourth largest retailer and will likely begin construction on six new hypermarkets in Australia next year. Think Aldi on steroids, bigger and sleeker. Selling everything from electronics to groceries, homewares and car tyres. The stores will be twice the size of a standard Coles and Woolies. But the government is accused of giving the German juggernaut special treatment. And its Aussie small business owners like Melbourne IGA operator Tony Inpen paying the price. Look, the, the thing that I find really hard to understand is why the government would even do this. Yeah, small business owners don't really get the same type of treatment as the big ones. Now, as a result, there's a real chance your local shopping strip could become a thing of the past. Cowfland has been able to turbocharge its aggressive expansion into Australia by going straight to Victorian State Planning Minister Richard Wynne and seeking approval for all of its six stores at once. Normally, businesses like Virginia's Match & Co Cafe in Melbourne's Dingley need to go to individual councils for approval, a lengthy process. What do you think about that, the fact that they may have got preferential treatment there? Uh, that makes me laugh because it took us a whole year to get a permit for this place. It, it took us forever. Send call from back to the, the councils. Make sure the councils keep doing what they're meant to be doing and putting supermarkets in villages and in business one zones so that we actually all create a, a vibrant shopping precinct. Planning documents reveal the stores will have a retail space of 4,000 square metres. The six calf lands are slated to be built in the Melbourne suburbs of Churnside Park, Dandenong, Epping, Oakley South, Coolaroo and Mornington. The retailer is currently scoping sites in Sydney and Brisbane, however, no exact locations have been confirmed. Cowfland is lobbying the government to build their hypermarkets on industrial zones rather than commercial ones. We have a position where Cowfland have come to Australia, gone and looked at commercial properties, made the statement that, gee, land is very expensive in Australia. If you go off to industrial sites, you're getting a massive free kick. Land value is very cheap, rents are cheap, and it's not right that they're creating new rules which no one else has been able to play by. Fred Harrison is CEO of Richie's, part of the IGA group, and has been with the business for close to half a century. He's spearheading the Save Our Shops campaign, where small Australian businesses have banded together against Cowfland. We're not afraid of competition, not at all. Our company's 148 years old. How can we be afraid of a competition? We face it every minute of the day for the last 148 years. We just want everyone to play by the one set of rules. That's not unreasonable. It completely eliminates the level playing field of competing fairly. Josh De Bruin is the CEO of the Master Grocers Association. If Cowfland are successful, if the minister gives in and approves these Cowfland sites to go ahead, it could cause a precedent, there's no doubt about it. What would then stop Coles and Woolworths or any other major coming into Australia, coming into Victoria, from doing exactly the same? In a statement to a current affair, Cowfland says it isn't seeking special treatment and that the planning process has been public and transparent. The German retailer went on to say it doesn't intend to compete with smaller Australian businesses, instead aiming to be more of a destination supermarket. And those independent retailers in suburban shopping strips will still be needed to serve the community. As part of the fight back, some Richie's IGA stores, like this recently upgraded supermarket in Melbourne's Roeville, are undergoing makeovers to give them more of a unique and boutique feel. There are sushi bars and even artisan products from local suppliers on sale. But these Aussie small businesses say their biggest weapon against the German raider is the personal connection they can provide to customers and their communities, something Kaufland won't be able to do. It doesn't scare me because I think uh, if you've got a good business set up and you give your clientele a really good 
service, product, um, atmosphere. I think people will always support you. We'll see you guys soon. You can read the full statements from Kaufland and the Victorian State Government on our homepage.